Here's a fascinating story. We've been talking about this all morning. This coming Saturday night at 11.35 p.m. marks the 60th anniversary of the largest earthquake ever recorded in the Rocky Mountains. It happened just west of Yellowstone National Park along the Madison River. MTN's John Shearer explains how the massive 7.3 quake took lives and changed the landscape. The power of this earthquake was immense. I'm standing a couple hundred feet above the old riverbed, which is underneath the waters of Quake Lake over here. It was all filled in by the 80 million tons of debris that came from that mountain right over there. These rocks you see either side of me are the size of houses. They came down with the slide, landing on this, the far side of the canyon, in just a matter of seconds. We don't believe that earthquakes can get much larger in this region. Books and articles have been written about this tragedy that claimed at least 28 lives. Most have something in common. They feature photos taken by 15-year-old John Owen. He was here in a vacation cabin with his family thrown off the couch onto the floor. Fearing the Hebgen Dam would burst after the quake, the owner of the resort told his guests to flee to nearby high ground. And before long, there was just a stream of cars coming in. 250 people made their way to what was later named Refuge Point. Right about dawn then, Dad said, here, take the camera, go take some pictures. The massive landslide pushed a wave of air in front of it at 100 miles an hour. It swept one man away. It ripped the clothing right off another survivor. You know, it's the human story that, you know, it's gut-wrenching to, to hear how some families were separated. Parents killed by a giant rock while their three children survived. It's also the geologic story. This is one of the largest landslides in North America. It left the picturesque canyon a wasteland. In the morning, it was like we were in a new world, like we'd been in one world in the campground and somebody picked us up and put us on a, a different planet. Those 250 people were stranded in this strange new world. To the west, the only road was under that 250-foot pile of debris. While to the east, the road had disappeared into Hebgen Lake. Middle of the morning, a plane flies over and a couple of smoke jumpers come out. It was like rescue from the sky. They brought medical supplies, food, and a radio, leading to one of John's most memorable photos. One guy's taking a real careful step, but in the background, the mountain over here, here's dust falling down. It was an aftershock. Aftershocks would have been um major earthquakes in their own right. There were three aftershocks bigger than magnitude 6.5. Heard accounts of the ground essentially didn't stop trembling the, the night of the earthquake. The Air Force sent rescue helicopters to take out the seriously injured, while a highway construction crew working to the east jumped into action. So late on the 18th, there was a road more or less where cars could drive out. 15-year-old John Owen was living an adventure. He was not the least bit frightened. And it took me a while till I realized the significance of the disaster here at the slide for me to calm down a little bit. Some, like Irene Bennett and her son, the only survivors from a family of six, took decades to get over the trauma. Probably 35 years and they've never been back to this area and we walked up to the Memorial Boulder and they pointed out where they were camped. It was very emotional, but it brought closure to her. Just behind me here, under the water and maybe 100 feet down is the site of the old Rock Creek campground. Then in front of me is where the slide happened. It sent trees and rock and debris crashing through the sleeping campers. Some escaped and some suffered serious injuries but 19 people never made it out. They're still here, buried under a mountain of rubble. At Quake Lake, near Yellowstone National Park, I'm John Shearer for MTN News. Wow. Unbelievable. Unbelievable story. Uh, amazingly enough, John Owen did not suffer from traumatic stress. He bought land along the river, built a summer home, and he returns every year.
Tomorrow we'll hear the less well-known story of what happen, happened at Hebgen Lake during and after that quake. Now here's one more really interesting anecdote to pass along from John Owen's story. His family had been close friends with the owner of that resort where they were staying the night of the quake. And eventually John's father passed away, as did the wife of that resort owner. And sometime after that, the lodge owner married John's mother. So the man who led his own family to safety and John's family to safety eventually became his stepfather. That's awesome. It's just incredible. And, and there's much more to come. Parts two, three, and four for the rest, for the rest of the of week, week. Wednesday, Absolutely. Thursday, Friday. So be sure to tune in. And yeah, plus we'll have an in-depth interview well. with uh, Joy that you saw there, uh, the um, director of the uh, earthquake visit. Fascinating. Visitor. You and John have been in-depth It's, been a, it's in been a great learning experience for both It's of us incredible. Yeah. We do have to take a quick break.